for him. And also, we should pray in Thanksgiving for him as well. Uh, we've approached just about the end of the day. Uh, we're going to invite up for final thoughts the rector of the shrine. Uh, please welcome once again Father Peter Fellner. points by way of a wrap-up. Three minutes. You might say there are corridors on the from or spin-off, reflecting on the profound thoughts that Archbishop Burke just presented to us. Role of Our Lady on Calvary, Mother of the Church, and what she wants us to do, not only 500 years ago, but still today, in the Americas. Our first point, make her the center of your lives. I'm talking about your personal life. It's the only way you'll save your soul. It's the only way you will share in the blessings that Jesus has brought us. And the reason is, this is the way Jesus wants it done. He has picked the very best way. St. Thomas tells us there couldn't be a better happiness, blessedness than the one he has chosen from us in any infinitely more perfect world than the one we live in today. So we want to keep that in my mind. We want to make her the center of our lives, or to use our own words, frame our daily life in terms of prayer and penance. Delight in sharing in the mystery of the cross, of being able to risk something with her for your own salvation and ultimately the salvation of the, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of the world. Or to borrow the words of Father Gerard Manley Hopkins and Our Lady compared to the air we breathe, breathe. She should be our atmosphere, the air we breathe all day long and all night long. Or to quote him again, our better world in which to wend and find no sin. This is what our Lord makes possible for us by giving her to us as our mother and in a very special way at Guadalupe as the mother, the queen of the Americas. That brings me to the second point. Right. We're indeed obliged to save our souls first, but we can't talk about salvation unless, in fact, we want to work for the salvation of everyone whom Mary wants to be her children, for the conversion and the salvation of all souls. It is only by what St. Francis called the Sermon of Good Example we're already doing a stupendous work. We may not see the effects of our good example, but we will when we get to heaven, and we probably will even in this, in, in this life. There is nothing so powerful as good example. Good example is the example that we give in consecrating ourselves to Our Lady in imitating the virtue of her, of her immaculate heart. It will always triumph over bad example, scandal, in the t technical sense of moral theology. The activities of people who deliberately induce, seduce others to sin, join them in hell. She is the woman who crushes the head of the serpent. And that's a part of Guadalupe. We also want to remember in this context, context how important it is to be on the side of Our Lady if we want a civilization of love a humane civilization. It's impossible without her. And the reason is very simple, because the culture of life in all its forms depends upon the culture of a pure heart. Only the pure of heart shall seek God. That's why they're blessed. The culture of purity means devotion to Our Lady. The culture of death only triumphs 
where the devotion to Our Lady, the culture of purity, is rejected, period. It's a simple, basic principle. You can have all the other hypotheses that you want, but when push comes to shove, this is what is going to happen, one or the other, the culture of life or the culture of death, heaven or hell. And Our Lady is the one who is constantly intervening. In our private lives, we don't know about it always, but she is, and in our public lives. Woe to those who insist on ignoring her, or worse, being indifferent to her. That brings me to the final point. Push, solemn definition of the fifth dogma. As Cardinal Aponte put it so nicely, the triumph of the co-redemptrix, the lady who was victorious on Calvary, absolutely victorious, and can guarantee for us a victory over sin. The worst evil is not physical death. The worst evil is mortal sin. Keep it always in mind. And as our Lord said, somebody chops your head off because you love him and are willing to stand up for him in public. Don't worry, he'll put it back on. He didn't add, but he practically implied what will happen to those as were, who don't repent of chopping off heads, heads of those who love him. We need to support that. Because I once heard of Mother Angelica, until the dogma is proclaimed, nothing much is going to change. Our Lord wants it. Our Lady wants it. And I don't know how many saints of our times wanted it. St. Maximilian Kolbe. St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, Edith Stein, and a host of others who laid down their lives for Christ in the concentration camps of our era. So let us resolve, as it were, keep these three points in mind, and I think we can accomplish a great deal for the Church, for souls, and for Jesus. That's his great point. He wants us to do something for him. That's how much he loves us. He wants us to be active. He wants to be his cooperators, his friends. I have not called you my slaves, my servants. I have called you my friends. You know what it's all about, and you know, as it were, how to organize your lives, lives, not just singly, but all together together as members of the Holy Catholic Church. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. I'd like to thank again all of our distinguished guests uh, and our speakers. Again, take the words of Father Peter. I think it's a great summary for the day. And uh, let's thank Our Lady in closing before we depart here. Let's thank her for giving us this day, for the symposium, for the great gifts of uh, these speakers. And why don't we open our hymnals? I think you have a red hymnal there. We're going to sing Hail Holy Queen and Throned Above. Uh, that's number 702. In your book. Thank you all and God bless you all. Hear holy greed and throne above, O Maria. Hear Queen of mercy and above, O Sing with us, ye set up in and other trees on the hill. Salve, 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 Regina.